Good morning everyone. Welcome to Out on the Ranch with Dr. Lee. This is my kitty cat Frankie here and today we're going to do part two of a three-part cancer awareness series and what we're going to try to do today is show you what you can do at home to check your kitty cats to see if they have precancerous conditions. Basically what we're looking for is lumps and bumps just like last week when we did Dozer in the dog series every day when you pet your little kitty cat you need to just rub them down all over and don't miss one square inch of of body tissue when you do it when these when these kitties come in for their yearly physicals we listen to their hearts we check in their ears we look in their mouth we check their eyes and we literally rub our hands over every square inch of their body and you need to be doing that at home too because you catch these things early on and a lot of times a little bit of surgery will take will save the cat's life but basically there's things that we do here that you can't do exactly uh, as we do them unless you're trained i.e listening to their heart with a stethoscope putting an otoscope in their ears things like that but there are ways that you can check what we're checking and basically with kitty cats just like in dogs you want to know if their heart is beating regularly you want to know if their heart is beating harder than it should faster than it should and there's no way to know that unless you check it every day and you know what normal is and just like in the dog you can run your hands down here in the armpits on both sides and a lot of times if you just work at it you can get your fingertips between those ribs and the spaces between the ribs and you can feel that heart beating same thing back here this is the femur bone right here and you can put your hand in here inside in the flank and come back on top of that bone and that femoral artery runs over that bone and if if you do it every day sooner or later you're going to be able to feel that thing just from practice and when you find that artery once you find it it makes it easier to find it each time and all you have to do is put your fingers on it. it's just like us checking pulse right here on our wrist all you have to do is put your hands back there and you can feel that artery too i always check the heart first and then i go to the ears what you're looking for in the ears you do not want to see a discharge you don't want to have a stinky ear if you smell a foul smell coming from the ear that needs to be checked if you see any lumps or bumps in there and just like the dog they've got hunks of cartilage that are very weird shape and what they have on one side they should have on the other side too if you ever find a lump or bump that a cat has in one ear that he does not have in the other ear then that then that needs to be checked as well but always check the eyes too you want to make sure that the pupils are the same size uh, a lot of times we'll have uh, brain problems that cause the pupils to change in size tumors in the brain things like that and you also want to make sure if you have a kitty cat that has white hair around its nose or a white hair on its ears and pink skin underneath you saw the pictures of my kitty cat on the cancer video and and she had a pink nose with white hair around it and she got squamous cell carcinoma a malignant tumor that's going to take her life so those cats that do have pink noses and pink skin on their ears and white hair around those areas they really need to be in the house or protected from the sunlight between 10 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the afternoon or they're really really going to be likely especially if they live as long as mojo did she's a 16 year old cat and um, really likes the sunshine and it's hard to keep them out of the sun if they like it but uh, but that's something that you need to try to prevent but on Frankie cats that have a lot of orange in their coats like Frankie does uh, cats like calicos that have a lot of orange and also tortoise shell kitties any cats that have orange they have a lot of black pigment commonly in their nose their eyelids their lips and their gums Frankie is unlike those cats. A lot of orange cats have that. He doesn't have much pigment at all, but uh, that is one thing you need to look for and make sure that those areas that are black on an orange cat are not raised or ulcerated, angry looking uh, lesions. As long as they're flat and there's a little bit of pigment, uh, get your vet to check it. But in most cases, they're, they're just benign accumulations of, of pigment in there. But you always wanna open up their mouth Cats don't care much for that. They'll usually pick up that paw and come at you. 
but make sure or the other paw that's good frankie you're a good kitty cat and you also if they'll let you open their mouth like that look in make sure you don't see any areas that are ulcerated any teeth that are missing or really really loose any tumors growing in there any lumps bumps anything that does not look perfectly normal you need to have that checked also one thing to look for when you look in a cat's mouth is look for yellowing especially toward the back of the mouth if you see yellowing on the roof of the mouth back toward the back that's an indication too and if you see it there one thing you also need to do is pull an eyelid back like that so you can see the whites of their eyes and if you see a yellow discoloration there you need to get that kitty into the vet pretty quickly and what we've done just like i do check the heart check the ears then I go to the tip of the nose and we're going to work our way all the way back. So the next thing in line is in the throat right here. You want to check for lymph nodes and we're just looking for lumps and bumps. Again, there's salivary glands, there's thyroid tissue in here. And we do see a lot of cats that have thyroid problems. You saw Ricky Bobby in one of the other videos where he had that terrible tumor in his thyroid gland. We have a lot of cats that just have thyroid disease and they'll have a big lump where their thyroid gland is. And if you're paying attention to the heart rate, those cats will usually have a very, very high heart rate too. And they're usually real skinny cats. They don't feel good. They're kind of, kind of slender, but they eat all the time. So a cat that eats a lot, but he's still rail thin skinny, that's an indication that that cat needs to be checked. Thyroid disease is pretty fixable. There's a lot of treatments, different avenues of treatments that you can use. We've got a lot of hyperthyroid cats in this practice. Coming on back a little bit now, we've, we covered this area up here. Coming back here, you need to check the bones, make sure all the bones feel the same on both sides and that they're not painful. You need to also, coming back here into the chest, if you feel a bunch of vibrations while the cat is breathing or if your cat coughs or if your cat does open mouth breathing those things need to be checked really quickly we see a lot of cancers in the in the cat's lungs we see a lot of fungal conditions and which which brings to mind another thing too if you ever if your cat starts to get what looks like a roman nose if his nose starts to swell or if he has a discharge from his nose um, commonly see fungal problems causing that in the kitty cat too. Um, coming on back in the cat, if your cat is not a little fat pig like my cat is, a lot of times you can feel the kidneys in these cats. And, and again, this is not anything you're gonna be able to tell on the first day, but if you're checking that cat every day and you get a good appreciation of how he should feel, then you have a much better chance of telling when things go wrong. But just run your, your hands through his abdomen or her abdomen side to side. And coming on back, you just wanna palpate through the bowels and your cat will get used to this too. If you do it every day, couple it with a little bit of petting, maybe a little food in the bowl or some treats laying around when you do it too. And as you work your way back, you do not want to feel any masses in the bowels. And, that, and the bowels are right behind the rib cage as you, work, as you work your way back there. Next thing in line is the bladder. Bladders can have cancers in them too. Again, it's kind of hard to feel, but as you, as you get used to doing this, you'll be able to feel that bladder. Kind of changes in size day to day, depending on what time of day and when the last time the kitty cat urinated. And especially if you have a kitty cat that has urinary tract infections, urinary tract inflammations, or if your cat has what's diagnosed as feline idiopathic cystitis, or they'll call it FIC. If your cat has any urinary tract issues at all, you need to know how to palpate a bladder. But also, further back now, check both the back legs. Again, talking about the lymph nodes, they have lymph nodes in the same places the dogs do, under the chin, in front of the shoulder blades, in the armpits, back here in the groin, and also behind the knees. You need to always be checking those, and if you feel any of them enlarge, that needs to be checked out. Always check their anus, their rectal area back there. Always check their, sorry Frank, <laughs> I must have felt weird. Always check their anus, always check their urinary openings back here. Make sure there's no protrusions from those uh, areas and make sure the color is always consistent. 
and you need to always be watching the feces, the stools, and the litter box where your cat's had a bowel movement. You always need to be checking that. Make sure that stool is of a normal consistency, normal size, that there's no blood in it. You need to always check the urine too, especially you guys that have kitty cats that have urinary disease. You need to always make sure the urine, the amount they urinate is the, is the average amount and that it does not have any blood in it. And you need to kind of watch too. If they start urinating outside the box, uh, then that's an indication that there, there, there could be some issues, especially if your cat already has some urinary disease. That's pretty much it in, in the cat. That, that, in a nutshell, that was really quick, but basically the most important thing is do what I'm doing because cats like it anyway, and especially if you've got a little love bug like Frankie because he likes to suck up the attention. But if you just watch him, you can tell he likes me messing with him, and most cats are that way too. If they don't comply readily, start doing it right before you feed them, make it around food time, or have some little kitty cat treats to give them while you're examining them. But I, I would really, 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 from, from my heart to yours, I would encourage you to do your best to make this part of your daily routine. And thank you very much for tuning in. And again, I really appreciate all the comments you guys leave. Uh, Boy, it's shocking. I bring up the word cancer and it's like the comments and the replies uh, have just increased tenfold. Uh, everyone talking about all the animals they've lost. So it's, it's shocking, the numbers. It's, it's much more common than any of us would ever guess. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I thank you. Frankie thanks you. And I promise you, your kitty cat will thank you too. We'll see you next time on Out on the Ranch with Dr. Lee and Frankie.